Welcome everyone to the Hytale lore series, in which I'll be going over what the lore of Hytale could be. Disclaimer, everything in this video is speculation and is not actual information. This is part one, in which I will talk about the two godly beings which are the most important part of the history of Hytale, Gaia and Varric. Before I continue, only a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed, so if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, it's free and you can always change your mind. Time to dig into the story of Hytale. First of all, Gaia, the goddess of nature. She is the creator of life in Hytale. In Hytale, Gaia is looked at as a goddess whose mere appearance describes who she is. The white parts of her clothes are what represent her main element, light. Light is her main element because light is what runs the circle of nature. Animals need light to see and survive, plants need light to make food. Without light, this circuit of life is no more. The green parts of her clothes represent nature. Nature means balance. Trees, plants, the cosmos are all parts of nature because they are balanced. If life needs to survive, it needs food. If Orbis needs life on it, it needs a sun and the right temperature to support life. If something in the universe wants to move, it needs the energy to do that. Want to learn a new skill? You have to train for it. And there are many other examples. In nature, everything happens, but at a cost. Nothing happens for free. And that is what is so fascinating about nature. Gaia has leaves as our green parts because plants are a great example of nature. She has five ponytails with beads on them. These beads are the essences of the five natural elements, earth, fire, water, air, and lightning. Without these essences, the elements wouldn't exist. If the water essence was gone, water wouldn't exist. If the lightning essence was gone, lightning wouldn't exist. These essences are basically what keep the elements in existence. Or in short, you can say that these are the sources of the five elements. Gaia is the creator of all of Hytale's ultraverses, and also all the natural life on them. Creatures of Orbis like Quebecs, Farins, humans, etc. worship Gaia as a goddess. She has been depicted by them as statues. They built these statues to honor and worship her. The most precious statue is the one made by the Quebecs. The Quebecs built this statue of Gaia from the wood of their ancestors. So with this being the statue of their goddess and being made out of the wood of their Quebec ancestors, it is pretty valuable to the Quebecs. There are even temples in Hytale where people used to show up occasionally and worship Gaia, and even drew stories on sacred memory windows, which we see in the concept art. These drawings probably represent their beliefs, or maybe they represent ancient history. Those temples are now abandoned, and a lot of Gaia's statues are now ruined and covered in moss. Gaia is a major part of Hytale's storyline, and at some point will even help us fight against... Varen, the evil, whose only destiny is to corrupt using the void element. The void is basically nature's opposite. In nature, things are even, but with the void, things are pretty odd. Bringing people back to life, mind control, unconditional power, unrelenting destruction of life. These things are not natural, but with the element of the void, these things can be done. Varen is the being that possesses this magic. But where does he get that void magic? One theory is that just like Gaia has the five elemental essences on her hair, Varen might have the Void Essence. We don't know where it is or what it looks like. With this magic, he can bring dead beings back to life, he can give them power, he can make anyone his slave, and can cause mass destruction in an instant. 
Varen also has many minions and followers, like Void Eyes, Void Spawns, Outlanders, Skeletons, the Void Dragon, Void Spider, Void Golem, and more. Some of these creatures were once normal. For example, the Void Dragon was once a normal fire-breathing dragon, until he got into a fight with someone who wielded Void Magic. You can see that he probably got into a fight like that in the past by looking at his stripped wings and damaged body and stomach. During that fight, the dragon got corrupted by the void and is now a follower of Varen, destroying anyone who opposes him. The void golem and the void spider have a similar story. Some other followers of Varen are the ones who submit to Varen and accept him as a god. They worship him. One of those kinds of creatures is the Outlanders. They are Varen's followers as they have Varen's symbols, and they even possess void magic. They have archetypes like the Ranger, the Warrior, the Chief, the Colossus Boss. They even have priests and cultists who do research on the void and conjure spells out of void magic. One of the theories about Varen's origin is that he is from some other dimension, and he's on a conquest to corrupt every Ultraverse ever. Not only these, but other Ultraverses that are beyond. Varen came here and is now starting to corrupt these Ultraverses. But what happened next, after Varen came into the story? That is a story for part two of the lore of Hightail. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, it's free, and you can always unsubscribe if you want. I have a Discord and Twitter, links are in the description. I wish you a good day and I'll see you in the next video.